All right, welcome back for what we're going to call hard factoring examples. Now these are the ones where we have the number, in this case 4, in front of the x squared, and that's what just makes things trickier because it kind of messes up the math on coming up, up with that middle term. But the key is going to be, don't get confused by whatever crazy technique your teacher teaches you for working these out. Because I find that the students that I meet who are afraid of factoring or are confused by factoring, usually it's because there was some tech, like crazy table that their, parent, that their uh, teachers had them learn how to do. Like they'd make some weird thing, they put some coefficients here, and I don't know what it is, but they end up doing like a crossword puzzle above the problem to try and figure out what to put in the parentheses to come up with the right middle term. When if they had just taken waste, you know, all that time they wasted on the chart, if they had just put that into trying and erasing a couple of times, they would have been fine. Another problem with the special chart technique that teachers show you is that even if you uh, figure out how to how to use that at the time, the next year when you when factoring comes up again in you know pre-calculus and algebra two and calculus and all that stuff, you've totally forgotten how to do that crazy technique. And you will have you know, forgot, long forgotten it, so you don't know how to factor either because you kind of did things a crazy way the first time around. So here's my step-by-step -step instructions. You'll notice they're exactly the same as the instructions for the easier problems. The only difference is that there's a try-again aspect because you're, you know, it's not likely that you're going to come up with the exact right factoring the first time on these harder problems. But that's okay. It's no big deal to write stuff down in a race. The worst thing you can do is be afraid of erasing. So let's just get started on this sample problem. 4x squared. Hmm. So instead of putting x and x, I've got to put two things that multiply out to 4x squared. I don't know. I always just go with the easiest thing, so I'm going to go 2x and 2x. Negative 1. The assigned rules are the same as last time. So because I have a negative 1 here, my only options are plus and minus. And then 1 and 1. And at this point, I'm just ready to... Uh, Boil it out and see if I got it right. First two terms multiply to 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. And I got plus 2x. All right. Uh-oh. I see a mistake immediately. These two things cancel out to nothing, which means I just got 4x squared minus 1. That's not the original. The original had a middle term of 3x, and that, of course, is where the error is usually going to be, is that you'll have the wrong middle term. So this did not work out, but... You know, a lot of times you would then go and start reevaluating these these numbers and see if you want to switch those. But the only two numbers that multiply to one are one and one. So our only option is to change the two x's to something else. So I don't know. Let's try x and four x because that's pretty much our only other option. And we'll stick with the plus one, minus one. Foil this out, see what happens. I'm actually going to skip the first and last term because I know those will work. Four x times x squared is x squared. The middle term's a question mark. Four x times one is four x. And then negative 1 times x is negative x. So now I get a middle term of 3x. Is that correct? It's Uh-oh, it's really close. I, this is a plus 3x, right? Because there's no sign in front of it. But then this is a negative 3x that I wanted. So it turns out I'm actually really close. And all I have to do to get the right answer is switch the negative and plus signs. So I'll just get rid of this and put in a negative. Get rid of that, put in a positive. So now it should work out. If I foil this out, I get x squared, 4x squared plus x, minus 4x, minus 1. And you notice that the negative 4x and x now combine into a negative 3x. So yes, this is in fact the right answer. Now if you were working in pencil, as you should be, you would have just erased the signs and put in the negative and the plus. I have a pen, so I can't do that, but point remains. Recopy your work and make, you know, if the teacher can't understand what you wrote, you're probably not going to get full credit. Another example here. Bum, ba, dum, bum. Do my usual sets of steps. 3x squared, there's only one option, is 3x and x, because 3 is a prime number. So I got 3x and x. The last sign is negative, so that means I have to do a plus and a minus. And I need to multiply it to a negative 12. Now there's a few options here. Because 12, you can get 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 4 times 3 even. So it's, I don't know. I'm just going to take a stab. I'm going to go 3 and 4, because that seems like middle of the road, you know? Let's see what happens. We get 3 times, 3x three times x is 3x squared, so that works. And then 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. And I've got a plus 3x and a negative 12, of course. So did I miss the mark? 
yeah, I got a negative 9x as my middle term. Hmm. I missed it by a little bit, but I'm in the ballpark. So what I'm going to do is just try switching the 3 and the 4. Maybe that'll work. So we'll do 3x plus 4, and then x minus 3. A subtle change, but it might make a difference. Now my middle term will be 3x times negative 3, which is negative 9x. And then this one is plus 4x. Oh, awesome, it works. Negative 5x is, in fact, the correct middle term. So this was the right answer, which we'll recopy to make it nice and neat so that our teacher gives us full credit. Excellent. Now, I got lucky on that one. It only took two guesses. But since my first one wasn't too far off, I went with it. All right, now there's one step I did not add to my list of rules, but I could have. But you should do this in all factoring anyway. Whenever you have a number in front of the x, you'll see how these are big, ugly numbers, 15, 24, 12. You can sort of imagine there's an awful lot of possibilities to try and figure this one out. But the first thing you want to do, whenever anybody asks you to factor something, they don't just mean do the parentheses. They also mean what we did in the previous couple of videos, which is factor out common stuff, you know, factor out junk. So as you can see, there's actually a number that will go into all three of these, and that is 3. So I could pull a 3 out first, and then I'll get 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. Not great, but better. So at this point, I'll try factoring. Got to keep my 3. All right, so 5x squared luckily only has one option. That's 5x and x. This time I have the, the negative last term, but the positive middle term. But since the last term is negative, all, that's all that matters. So I get plus minus. And now 4, I always go middle of the road. I'm going to go 2 and 2. Um, all right, so if we foiled this out, we're going to ignore the 3, because right now we're just trying to see if this stuff right here multiplies to this stuff in here. I'll get 5x squared, obviously. Then I'll get 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. And then plus 2x is, oops, negative 8x. All right. Honestly, I got lucky on this one because negative 8x, while not the right answer, I need a positive 8x. And I have a negative 8x. But like I said before, if you switch the signs, that'll just, if you switch the plus and the minus without changing anything else, that'll usually just switch the sign in the middle term. So instead of 5x plus 2, I'll have 5x minus 2. And then instead of x minus 2, I'll have x plus 2. And that should give it to us, because we'll get 5x squared plus 10x minus 2x is a total of positive 8x, and then minus 4. So we did it. If you really want to go nuts, you could then redistribute the 3 back in. You should do that. I'm not going to, because I don't want to waste everybody's time. Bummer example. Huh, what does that mean? Well, we got big problems here, right? First of all, it doesn't have an x squared in it. It does have an x squared, but it also has these heinous higher powers of x, which are not typical factoring problems. It also has big, ugly numbers, sixes and nines and junk. But, you know, if I do that factor out thing first, that'll get me there. So let's give it a shot. What'll, what can I factor out of this? Well, for starters, everything's divisible by 3. So let's draw a 3 out. There's actually too many x's as well. There, the lowest power of x I see is x squared, so I'm going to be able to pull out an x squared. And that'll leave me. So what do I have to multiply 3x squared by? By to get 6x to the fourth. I have to multiply it by 2x squared. 3x squared to 9x squared. See, so 3 to 9 is negative 3. And then x squared to x cubed is x. And then to get from 3 to negative 6 is negative 2. And to get from x squared to x squared is nothing. All right. So it turns out this is factorable because now once I factor out the common term, common factor, I've got an x squared, sort of your typical trinomial that's factorable. So we'll try that, 3x squared. I need two sets of parentheses. All right, so 2x and x is my only option. And uh, we have a negative 2 right here. That means I need to do a plus and a minus. And for 2, 1 and 2 are my only options. So 3x squared, and then what would this foil out to? We got 2x squared minus 4x plus x minus 2. Yeah, 
that worked out actually already. Got super lucky on my first try. So this is in fact the correct factoring. And just since we're nervous, we could try factoring in, you know, multiply the three x squared times all this too. So check that my original factoring out was correct. Three x squared times two x squared is six x to the fourth. Three x squared times negative three x is a negative nine x cubed. And negative two times three x squared is negative six x squared. So there you go. We got the correct factoring. All good. Now I got kind of lucky on that last one, but that's going to happen all the time. If you're off, just try again. The only way to get good at these is to practice. So keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Do all your homework. Do all the e if your teacher only assigns odd problems, do the e even problems too. Because you can always check your answers. You don't need the back of the book to know if you're right on these, since you can foil it out. And if you factored everything in the book, there's almost nothing a teacher could throw at you that would mess you up on the test.